In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a photoresistor, also called a photocell or light-dependent resistor, as a light sensor for your Arduino projects. These sensors let you measure ambient light levels in a room, detect when something is covered or blocked from light, or depending on how you write your code, when a brighter light, like a flashlight, is aimed at it. You can find photoresistors all around you in devices you use every day. For example, in this night light, here is one on the bottom. So this is an example where it will be used to measure ambient light levels and automatically turn the light on once light levels drop below a certain threshold. And in this children's puzzle that plays music, when I lift the pieces up, you can see a photoresistor embedded there. So when that gets covered up, it's blocking the light. And when it gets removed, light hits the sensor and activates the music. As you may have guessed from one of the names, light-dependent resistor, a photoresistor is a resistor whose resistance value depends on the amount of light hitting the face. So I have a multimeter connected to my photoresistor here, set to measure resistance in the 20 kilo ohm range, and we see that with ambient light levels in this room, right now I'm getting a reading just under about 4 kilo ohms. But if I cover the sensor up and block some light, that resistance goes all the way up to just over 20 kilo ohms. I'm actually out of range there, so I have to change settings on my multimeter. And if I take a flashlight and aim it directly at the sensor, the res resistance drops quite a bit down below one kilo ohm. So these are not very precise or great for measuring absolute or exact light levels. They tend to have a pretty big tolerance or range on what exactly the resistance will be. But in general, the resistance, resistance is going to go down as light levels increase and go up as light levels decrease. As we will see in a minute, an Arduino cannot measure resistance values directly, it can measure voltage. So we're going to build a circuit and hook this up to the Arduino that allows us to measure changing voltage instead of that changing resistance, which we can then use as a proxy for the amount of light hitting the sensor. We are going to switch over to the computer to take a closer look at the circuit and code. So you can see here, I have the photoresistor, which has two leads, inserted into two different rows in the breadboard. One of those is connected to five volts from the Arduino, and the other is connected in series with a large resistor. In this case, I started with one kilo ohm, but the exact value for this resistor that works best is going to depend on the resistance range of your photoresistor, which again can vary, so you would need to check the data sheet for that. But a general rule of thumb is to start with something like one kilo ohm, 10 kilo ohms, or even 100 kilo ohms here, and then we'll see later when we run the code, you can see how playing with that value affects your sensor reading. And the other end of that resistor is then connected to ground. This forms a circuit called a voltage divider, where we have two resistors in series, and we are taking the middle pin and measuring the voltage on that pin using one of the Arduino's analog inputs. And again, that is necessary because the Arduino is not a multimeter, it can't measure resistance changes directly, but it can measure changes in voltage. So when we have connected the photoresistor and the fixed resistor in series like this, when we shine light on the photoresistor, its resistance is going to go down, but that is going to cause the voltage to increase. So more voltage means more light, which makes this a little more intuitive, although you could reverse the order here connect this resistor to five volts and that would still work. It would just reverse the behavior. So more light would mean lower voltage. Either way is fine. I just find this way more intuitive. We also have an LED connected here. I'm not gonna go over those in this video because we cover them earlier in our Arduino tutorial series, which you can find linked in the description. The code to control an LED using the sensor reading is pretty simple and similar to what you would use for any other analog input on the Arduino, like a potentiometer, which we cover earlier in our tutorial series. So first we declare constant variables for the pins we are using, one for the LED and one for the sensor. We declare a variable for the sensor value, and then another constant for the threshold we are going to compare that sensor value to when deciding to turn the LED on or off. In the setup function, we use the pin mode command to set the LED pin as an output. We do not need to use pin mode with the analog input, so we don't need that. And then we initialize serial communication, which we will use to print out the sensor value, which is useful for calibration when deciding what you want to set this threshold variable to. In the loop function, we use the analog read command to read the sensor pin and store that in the sensor variable, which we then print out to the serial monitor. 
And then we have an if else statement where if the sensor reading is less than the threshold, meaning light levels have dropped below a certain value or it is getting dark, we are going to turn the LED on. So that's the behavior you would expect for an automatic nightlight. Else, if the sensor reading is greater than that threshold, we are just going to turn the LED off. So if I run the simulation, we can see that in Tinkercad, I get a little slider here to simulate light levels hitting the photoresistor. So when it is dark, the LED is on. And if we look at the serial monitor printing out here, I'm only getting a sensor reading of six. But as I start increasing that slider, the sensor reading goes up, but I am still below my threshold, which I have set to 500. So the LED is still on. So as I continue to slide that up, eventually that value goes over 500 and the LED turns off. I mentioned earlier that you can also change this resistor value. So here I have changed it from one kilo ohm to 10 kilo ohms. And I'm going to start the simulation and you can see that that has the effect of increasing the voltage. So I'm starting out with a reading of 54 here instead of six and it goes up much faster with just a slight movement of the slider. So I pass that threshold a lot sooner. So there is no right or wrong value for this resistor. It's going to depend on the resistance of your sensor and your application and when exactly you want the sensor to be triggered. But again, you can adjust both this resistor value and the threshold in your code so you can fine tune exactly when it's going to turn on or off. And of course, this doesn't have to be purely on or off behavior with a single if else statement and a single LED. You could have multiple LEDs that light up at different thresholds or use the analog write command to change the brightness of an LED or even control the speed of a motor depending on the light sensor reading. Those are all things that we cover in other tutorials that you can find in our Arduino tutorial playlist linked in the description of this video. We hope you found this video useful for many more Arduino tutorials, cool science projects you can do with an Arduino, and a link to the Tinkercad circuits simulation of this circuit. Check out the links in the video description. For over a thousand other fun projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.